for a tale from the title but I made a printer in Minecraft. In this video I'm going to showcase it working, how it works, and some other stuff about it. So let's get right in. So here's the printer. It's very big from all of its storage and if we just zoom up at the very top you can see it is very high because this is the bottom then we zoom 100% that's the top. So as you can see I've already printed something which is a play button which if we just hit the reset it will reset it by making it all fall into some torches with hoppers under it. And this chest over here is the collection system so when all of it falls from down there it'll go through a hopper line going back up to this chest. And then these are all the colors you can display. You can display white, light gray, gray, black, red, orange, yellow, lime, blue, purple, brown, pink, and green. And the way you actually make a pattern for it to print is that you put it in this chest. So you just get our pattern here, which is another play button. So we're gonna put the actual play button sign there and then fill it all around with red. And then this here is the lock for this chest, which locks this hopper here. So this hopper is locked, not allowing any of this to go through. But if we unlock that, then this will start going through. And this is actually on a very long delay, so it doesn't all go through. Because if it does, this is just going to be overloaded. And you can see from the end there that a block fell and then it gets pushed along. This is how it prints. It uses a bunch of concrete powder and it just pushes it along here. So if we got like green, it will push it all along. And when it gets to the bottom, it will push one more time on this row, pushing all of it across. And when it gets to the end, it will be stopped by obsidian so it can't push anymore. So if we just speed it up, you can see that it will print very fast. I'm actually using mod here so it can speed up because we don't want to be sitting here forever. There we go, this is the final image, and this is the image I saw at the beginning of the video, just I printed it one more time. And now, if you hit this button, it will make it all drop, go into those torches, and fall into those hoppers. And now this button will reset all the concrete using command blocks, and we run it through a command block output false command first, and at the end, we turn it back on. So when you hit it, you don't see any of that stuff, except just the command block output is now set to true. And like I said, it will reset all of them, so we are at Y300 here, and as you can see, it is all resetted. Now I'm actually going to look at how it all works, but before that, if you made this far into the video, then consider subscribing. It only takes 5 seconds to do, and if you could do that, that would be great. So just go down there, hit that button, make it gray, and on with the video. So now we're actually looking at the redstone. So the redstone isn't that complicated. First we're going to go with the command blocks here, which is just to refill this. As you can see, if I just load in all of this, you can see that this isn't doing anything else except just filling in the concrete. Because I will do this, and I will prove to you that I am not using these command blocks for anything else except filling in the concrete for that. So now we're going to the clock system here and this locking system, all it does is when you flick that, it just goes down here, hits that block. So when this turns off, it will not turn off this, which is very good. And then this is just a very long clock. So when it just goes around, it just keeps on going around. Very long delay. So all of the blocks can go without any of them interfering. Because say, for example, this red goes down and then when this piston is firing, this piston is also firing, pushing out this, which would break that block, which we don't want that, which is why we just make the delay longer. So now once the hoppers actually detect the block, it goes through here, which just goes all along. And if you put in a wrong block, it will bypass all of this and just keep on going all the way over here go back into this chest. But if it is one of the concrete blocks, then it will go into this section here, which is just a storage system, kind of, but at the end it will go back into these and just go right back over. Once one of these do detect something, it will go into free pulse, and then this will go off that, and on the bottom here, it will go like that, hitting this, then going. And what this is doing, it's just going around, going around like this, and then just goes all up into here. And this was actually not so hard to do, but it was kind of tricky to get this working, but I found it out in the end. It's just delay it. Just make a huge delay. 
even if it's going to cause the light, just make a huge delay. It's fine. When it gets to the end, it will hit these redstone torches and it will undo these pistons, but then the line will go off, which will make the redstone torches go back. So it will undo it, it will fall, and redo it, which would make it go out. So for this system, we use a clock, which will make all of these just fire in a very fast pattern, which is the fastest I could make it without the sand breaking. And this is how the clock gets activated. When one of these signals go off, well, unincluding the white and light gray because we don't need such a long thing here, it will just go one and this will go like three, but it's fine. When it reaches the end, we'll go through this first pulse extender, firing this one, which is the main one, which then goes up here and then hits this clock. And when this clock fires, it will just start pushing these pistons. So when a block falls here, it will just push it all across off to the end. So if we just wait for this to go to the end, it, there we go. And it's actually very fast of how it does this because this is the fastest I can make it, like I said. And when you turn the system off, that will fire firing this. And the way that works is just a redstone torch, so this will turn off, this will turn off, this will retract, and when this is done, turn back on, and then this will one tick it. Well, this is just kind of acting like a circuit, so this will only fire when it gets a pulse, but won't fire again once that pulse is still active. And then for the other one, it's just a longer thing, which I actually had to make kind of a custom thing. We just have to add an extra comparator to the end here. And as you can see, if I just show you these circuits, it's actually pretty simple of how we just run the wire right down over to it. So we'll have to say though, it's kind of a mess, but this is as good as it's getting. And then the last circuit I would have to say is just a reset circuit, which is when there's just a bunch of blocks here. So if we just turn on auto clicker for a second, you can see that all of blocks there and we don't want those so we just hit this button and all of it goes away. Now I talked a little about this in the beginning but I didn't actually give you a full explanation so now I am. Now like I said under these blocks it's just a bunch of torches and hoppers to collect all the blocks. The torches are to break them, the hoppers are to collect them. So when this button gets fired here it will undo that so the wire goes over here, down here, hitting a pulse extender so all of it will fall and just undoing some redstone torches here. And when it goes over here, we'll actually hit the circuit and I am actually very bad at doing uh, dropper transporters, well, item transporters, elevators, whatever they're called, but I am very bad at doing them. So this is the best I can do, which is probably better than most people because most people don't actually know that this is a thing in the game. So when an item goes for here, it will go up into this hopper, which you saw there for a second. It'll go across, hitting this one, which is just a higher one, going into this circuit, which is just a hopper line from the beginning, I said, going over here, hitting another one, going into this chest. Now you might be wondering, why is everything green here? And it doesn't even have to be green here, but it's because St. Patrick's Day was yesterday, and I wanted to make everything green because of St. Patrick's Day. So yeah, that's the end of the video, and YouTube thinks you might like this video, so go check it out and see if they're right.